Awesome. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode five of Cloud Chats. Uh, this episode is entitled Keyboards, Containers, and Red Pandas, airing on March 4th, 2021. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Mason, and as you can see, we have two co-hosts today. So go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. Uh, so I'm Chris Sev. I am also a developer advocate on the developer relations team here at DigitalOcean. Uh, and I am Matt Cowley, uh, Community Platform Manager uh, in DODX, which is our internal design and engineering for marketing. Kind of awesome. awesome. So, like, I guess I shouldn't say this on air. What does DODX stand for? Uh, I've never known. I just keep calling you. Design experience? Dig digital experience. There you go. I should okay. know that. Yeah. <laughs> I always just call it the design team, but I guess that kind of works. We do also have an engineering team in there as well. Well, I know you will give you the engineering team behind like the design. Like it's like all the things regarding the experience in one spot, which I actually kind of like. Like I like that we have our own engineering team where it needs to be and it doesn't have to sit cross org and then we have to go ask for requests and things like that. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Anywho, uh, our cold open today. If you're in the chat, go ahead and let us know. But um, and I really wish I had a. Maybe we could do a banner. I don't know. What keyboard do you use? What is the keyboard that you use every day? Chris, what you got? Oh, yeah. I should have came prepared for this one because I have like seven keyboards in this house running around. Um, I'm currently, because I am a big fan of mechanicals, and the louder, the better, I think. Like the more annoyed you, the people in the house are, the better your code is. So this is what I'm rocking now. I'm kind of sad to say, it, but mechanical keyboards kind of destroyed my wrists. So I have switched over to the ergonomic. Um, but yeah, what about you? I switched over a long time ago. I, so for some reason, I don't know if it's years of playing piano or a mild just dislike of computers in general. Um, I People have always told me that I punish my keyboards, and I do. Like I tie, I'm a very hard typer. So I needed, I, I needed a keyboard that would go with that. So a long time ago, I bought a Model S Black Ultimate from DOS Keyboard, mm -hmm. which if I hold it up, it has zero key markings on it whatsoever. At the, time, keyboard. at the time that I bought it, um, I wanted to learn Dvorak, the Dvorak keyboard layout. And I was like, well, I don't want there to be writings on my keyboards um, because then I won't learn the, I won't learn it. So I bought it. And this is actually my second one. My first one to this day is actually still running. Um, I just wanted this one. And I was actually waiting. I was like, I'll, eventually that one will die and I'll have a reason to get the new one. It never died um, because they're such good keyboards. So and I was like, no, I want the little volume wheel. So I finally just broke down and bought the keyboard with the volume wheel. So now I have two of these things, but I agree with Chris. If you can't hear me typing from a quarter of a mile away, then I'm, am I really typing? <laughs> oh, fair enough. Uh, what about, keyboard what I'm using like? is a remake of the Apple wired keyboard, which is, uh, I think it's a scissor switch. It's not mechanical. Wait, you like oh the scissor switch, not the butterfly ones, right? Yeah, not butterfly. Butterfly is awful. I was like, or if you like the wired you would... keyboard, <laughs> yeah, Apple had did a wired keyboard a while back. Um, I'm very anti wireless stuff. I have nothing wireless anywhere. I just don't trust it. So yeah, I have. It's just yeah, it's an Apple keyboard, which feels really wrong as like a, as a developer. I'm like, I feel like there's some expectation I have a mechanical, but. I've known people that either they either use the Apple keyboard, like that's their keyboard, um, or they go full mechanical. I've, I don't know. Let's see. Brian in chat says, I just use an old Apple wireless keyboard, though I do have four different mechanical keyboards in the house, none of which I like. I guess they're, I just like mushy low profile keys. I could definitely see. So that's the thing. Like my, I use clicky blues which are the most obnoxious of keyboards you can get. And they have the hardest activation energy, but I love it. Like, But I, I never have to worry about a soft type because I don't soft type. But it definitely sounds... They used to have to make me close my door at my office at the university because I would annoy the people in the hallway with my keyboard. And I love it. So uh, I, 
I used to think the the blues were the loudest or had the hardest. Um, what do you call it? The pressure that you activation. have to push? Uh, yeah, the activation. Activation, but um, so I've been looking at this Moonlander. I used an Ergodox for a minute, the split keyboard that has the um, octa ortho linear keys, and there's a whole like world of keycaps or switches that are way harder than the blues, which I have found. Ooh, ergonomic keyboards weird me out. I've I've tried a few, like the one you had. I've seen before, like where they're like curved and like I. The problem is, is I don't, I never know if I'm going to like the keyboard and I don't want to spend a lot of money and I hate returning things to Amazon. Like I have kept more things that I don't need or bought the wrong thing because I'd rather just take the loss than actually deal with the pro. And I know it's easy. I know it's easy. I just hate, I hate, I have such, I don't know. I must have like some sort of repressed trauma around returning things to a store. Um, so I never buy any of these fancy keyboards because I'm so afraid of what if I don't like it? Um, so side note on that, you can buy like these little key switch testers. Yeah. Um, and have you seen those Twitch accounts where all they do is they like go in and yeah, ASMR, <laughs> Twitch, ASMR keyboard. <laughs> well, it's not that I don't know if I'm going to like the switches. I don't know if I'm going to like the, uh, the hand layout. Like there was this one ergonomic keyboard where it's meant for people with like severe carpal tunnel and like your hand, like you curl your hands. It's like, a, it's like a cave. Like it looks like little U's. Can you your fingers? Yeah. Those, those are really awesome. But like I've never, not Amazon Kinesis. <laughs> no, not Amazon. I didn't even know Amazon had a Kinesis. No, not this one. Not that one. I'm talking about this like something one. like that one. That advantage too. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Everyone yeah. on our team has got one of those. I just I can't warrant spending three hundred and fifty dollars on something I don't know if I'm gonna like. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's not even the cost. It's I don't want to invest the time in learning how to type on that if I'm not gonna like it. Exactly. You can also program it to how you want to type. Yeah. That's what I had the hardest time with the Ergodox. Like you can you can program layers so that if I click one button, all of the keys turn into like media controls. And then I can click another. So you have layers of of keyboards. I, I and love then that, I switch over to the laptop time, and I forgot. At the same time, it really scares me. Like I don't want that dependency on a specific keyboard. I want to be able to go anywhere and type and do work. Well, <laughs> I, I also I used to not customize my keyboard until my one of my boss told me um, switching the caps lock in the control key has been the greatest that that has been the most technical like the the most productive thing I've ever done in my life because think about it think about where the caps lock key is located on your keyboard how easy it is just to go to A from A to caps lock versus control you have to turn your whole wrist down which one do you use more caps lock or control wait what. Swipping your caps lock and your control key. <laughs> my my pinky just naturally rests on the control key. M imagine if it could just naturally rest on the on the caps lock key. Wouldn't that it be a lot reach more? The caps lock key. How does your pinky not reach right next to How the? How big a is key? your keyboard? Oh it, wait, anyone, is this a is this a US versus UK layout difference? Do UKs oh, have different keyboards? Where what is okay? Now I'm confused. If I go from the bottom up, I have Control Shift Caps Lock Tab. Yes, and then what? But don't you put your fingers on ASDF? No, my fingers live on WASD because I'm a gamer. Oh, the gamer. Okay, well, if you're like most people and you do ASDF, the the caps lock one is like literally right next to your finger, and it's so much easier. Just try it. Like, like maybe you don't try it, Matt, but Chris, you should try <laughs> it because like the caps lock key is a brilliant key, but it's used like you use it less than one percent of your entire life. Oh, and, I, I love this trick. Mine is uh set to escape right now because of all the Vim work. Yeah. Yeah, because it no. <laughs> yeah, the caps lock key is a primal, it's like it, that is prime keyboard real estate that was sold to a very dysfunctional key. I mean, I do agree though. Like, I don't remember the last time I pressed the caps lock key. Actually, I do, and I did it accidentally and it really annoyed me. Yeah. So I put my control key there, which I get over. But what I love is that since my keyboard is blank nobody types on my computer it's almost a small um security mechanism i used to like my off my, my i had a boss at my university job that was used to like to snoop in people's computers and stuff um and he would have to bring his own keyboard to do it <laughs> so i eventually just disabled the front usb ports and it got him to go away <laughs> nice uh i i went ergodox for a minute and my problem is i went blank keycaps and to like learn 
the custom keys and they're blank. I don't know. Maybe that was the reason I couldn't I couldn't stick to it. Uh, okay. But the blanks are cool. Those are pretty cool. That is, I'm gonna have to try them eventually. <sighs> okay, let's move on to our next segment, news flash. So what do we have today? Um the Matt, you want to take the language rankings one? Sure. Let me open it up so I can actually have a read of this in depth. Because I'm curious now. Uh, Red Monk programming language rankings for January 2021 have been released. Um, the link has a whole load of information on the process behind how they determined this. Um, but the TLDR, JavaScript, is the number one programming language, to the surprise of no one, I feel. Uh, followed by uh... Python, and then Java, PHP, and C Sharp. Oh, and C++ and CSS have tied for fifth. CSS. There you go. There's the list. Yeah. There's the list. Um, and we'll drop that into by the top that. ones. It's all. So I, I found this interesting because this is 2021, right? Yeah, this is fresh. Mm -hmm. Fresh. Um, so I also pulled up 2020, which doesn't have much change. But then I also got 2019. I probably should have gone back five years. But I don't know. I didn't really see too much change in these, in this list of 2019 that's versus same list. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the same wait, list. No, Java and Python have switched. Python's Python's coming up. Yeah. yeah. Rust came into the top 20 this year. Oh yeah. Rust is gaining a lot of popularity. I haven't had the chance to play with it yet, but I do know that the people that like it love it. Um, mm. I will say I'm slightly happy that Haskell got kicked out. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm surprised the Go's still so far down. Um, yeah, yeah. Go is the thing that I have heard a billion things about, but have not tried. But check out 2015. Groovy. Oh, it's the same. JavaScript's been up the top for a very long time, and it will. I think it just will be because of like its its predominance. But it is nice to see Python as as a Python developer. It is nice to see Python slowly but surely climbing those climbing those steps. And also the other big one that's different between these two, TypeScript. It's gone from not being on there to number 10. Huh. Mm. Didn't uh, JavaScript just recently pass like highest jobs wanted in, in a language? Like only a couple years ago. Wouldn't surprise me given how popular React is now. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I know I've got to come up with a better transition term. <laughs> I'll, I'll right work on that later. Right. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, was that your transition? Was it okay? That was the cue, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to come up with a better one. Uh, okay, Rocket Lab announces a new eight-ton class rocket. It is named Neutron. Flying by 2024, aims to be able to deliver large, sat larger satellite payloads to space and provide the ability for human spacecraft. Also, it is the first. It has reusable first stage. CEO Peter Beck ate his hat in the announcement video. Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing what Matt has to say about that. I mean, actually, and they I, didn't. They didn't put an image of the hat eating. No, it's in. It's only in the announcement video. It's not in the article. <laughs> but yes, the hat was cut up, put in a blender, and then Peter Beck ate some of the hat. Okay. <laughs> not in the I, mood I like, for that. <laughs> I've got nothing else to say on it. Really, just awesome. He ate his hat. Okay. <laughs> SpaceX, <laughs> SpaceX Starship S, SN10 had a successful first flight and landing. <clears throat> the rocket took off, flew up to the target 10 kilometer altitude, performed a belly flop maneuver before vertical land, before flipping vertical to land, landed almost perfectly, slightly leaning. After a while on the ground, the rocket blew up. That seems to be just a, a they, they always seem to blow up. So I appreciate that you said it had its first flight as if it's going to have more. <laughs> well, I mean, if they put the pieces back together, like, yeah. No, it was, it was really cool to watch. Um, yeah, you know, everyone was happy. Those that wanted to see it land got to see it land. And those that wanted to see a rocket exploding got a <laughs> rocket exploding. Best of both worlds. Uh, Firefox 86 was released. Multiple active picture and picture viewers. Per site cookie jars in strict mode via total cookie protection. I do also believe now that Firefox 86 
maybe it was 83, but now like they are forcibly redirecting to HTTPS. Like you can't even type HTTP in the in the in the browser bar anymore. It will it will make you go to HTTPS. What about like localhost? I have no idea. I'm hoping that they didn't do it for localhost. But I've heard, I, I remember I because I, I did an SSL talk recently and I was talking about how Firefox and the more modern browsers don't even allow you to do HTTP anymore. Um, yeah. Any other uh, anything I, else cool on this one? I know. I think the cookie jars thing is quite cool. It's going to really start to stop tracking. I'm gonna have to move over to Firefox. I don't know. I've just never been a fire. I've tried. I've tried and tried and tried. I use Brave so. Brave does a good job of allowing me just to turn off every script that I want. I oh, know I use I use um, the dev edition of Firefox, and I wouldn't ever go near anything else anymore. Just hmm. such a fan of their dev tools. It is a pretty cool tool. Uh, Okta. Well, this was announced yesterday, yesterday afternoon. So this is fresh off the presses. Okta is acquiring Auth Zero for six point five billion dollars, which is. Billions. Lots of lots of money. I still don't think it's the largest tech acquisition. I think Red Hat still holds that one. When IBM bought Red Hat for what thirty mil thirty billion, um, but that's a big number. Yeah, it looks like they said they're supposed to be doing it to provide. Like I remember reading it to provide authentic, uh, like identity and authentication to the web. Um, like everywhere on the web, your identity is. They're they're hoping to give you that ability of like universal identity, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Um. I yeah, I, I, and scary perspective, it's really cool as well. Like, um, Corey put this really well on Twitter. He said, you know, Okta is a company that can really sell themselves well, right? They're used to working with big corporate companies. Uh, and then Auth0 is, is a company that developers get on well with really, really well. And it seems like a great combination of the two. It is. It is. And, you know, I've actually never had any complaints about Okta. Sometimes setting their stuff up is a little bit difficult, but that was like in 2016. So I imagine they've gotten better since then. Um, that was the last time I had to do an Octus setup at work, but I actually like, I remember getting on like a support line with them and they were surprisingly helpful. So like, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's a pretty cool company. Uh, last news item, Google fonts gets icons, material icons in five styles outlined, fought, filled, rounded, sharp, and two-tone. I thought Google fonts already had, wasn't that what font awesome was? Or is that something else? Font awesome no, that's not Google. Google. Oh, it's not Google. It's something else. Yeah, that are company. So yeah, it's basically this is okay. cool. Yeah, this is cool. As a non front end person, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I currently lean to hero icons dot com. I, I have actually ended up here recently as well. I like the fact that you can just grab the SVGs straight out of it. Yeah. This this of just like copy is really awesome versus probably having to do a whole um font file somewhere. Um, yeah, I have some other quick news. Go ahead. Okay, so let's see. Gatsby version 3 was released, or announced, at least, one of the two. Um, for sure announced. They added in hosting and Gatsby image plugin. So, if you're a Gatsby fan, React fan, static site generator fan, that's a big one to come out. Um... Yeah, that's the one I had. Cool. Yeah, that's really okay. cool. Well, we have some interesting news this week from DigitalOcean, which we're just going to go ahead and lean right into the... Uh, close my bank account there. Um, going to go ahead and lean right into the demo today, which is App Platform now supports launching of uh, public Docker images from Docker Hub, which is actually really, really cool. It's been a feature that... Uh, our customers have asked for since the beta and we, it was always kind of coming, but now we actually can do it. So um, just to demo it real quick, we're going to go ahead and install Nginx. Since Nginx is actually owned by, like since the Nginx container is maintained by Docker, I learned this because it like you have to put library in front of it. That's what the repo name is. So the hub name for all of uh, Docker Jesus, hubs. Yeah. The hub name for all of uh, Docker Hub's images is library. So found that out by having to ask support in DigitalOcean how to make it work. Because <laughs> I did not know that. Hi, Matthias. Good to see you. Glad you're here. 
uh, then we go ahead and just select it as a web service. We're at, because Docker, the, the base engine X1 runs on port 80, we have to change the HTTP port real quick. And we're just going to deploy it to New York. We're going to go ahead and just launch it. Now, of course, launching just a Docker Hub Nginx app doesn't really get you much. This is mostly just to demo how simple it is to demo, to launch the Nginx container. Um, but it is really neat that it has, it's just ready to go. So if you uploaded any sort of public service, um, I don't know if we're going to support private or not yet. I haven't heard anything about that. But we also have the DigitalOcean Container Registry. So you can upload your containers there. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Just another step in making deployments so much faster and so much easier. Yeah. And they, they since they're already on Docker Hub, since they're already pre-built, it's a fast deploy. Like that happened in, I would say, less than a minute. And now we have Nginx up and running. So... Uh, yeah, that is the demo for this week. It's a, it was a really fast lightning demo. We got through really it. Fast. We got, you know what? I like I, that's the whole point of them being a lightning demo. We've been doing 10 minute lightning demos. I'm like, are these really lightning demos? But they are now when we do it that way. So now we can move on and to ah, uh, a section that I we yeah, a section that I really like. It's a lot of fun. It's called Back in My Day. It's for all the people in the chat who are. Well, some of these you definitely aren't going to remember because a lot of these happened before any of us were, like before our grandparents were born. But we're, this is a section where we go back and we talk about historical events that have happened in tech in the last couple of weeks. That would have happened within the last couple of weeks. So I think we kind of in included this to be around anywhere from the end of February to beginning of March. So the first one we have, and this is really interesting, is that back in February 28th, 1885, was the day that AT&T uh became a became a company so they were found at&t was incorporated let me pull up my screen real quick at&t was incorporated uh with in in new york state as a subsidiary of american bell telephone eventually the company would merge and thus at&t was born 1885 if anyone in the chat is was born in 1885 let us know because we obviously have to get the guinness people out to you how old would they be? That's, that's what? That's 130, 136? I hope. <laughs> uh, okay. February. Modern now, medicine, yeah. you might. Yeah. Who knows? February 28th, 1954, the first color television goes on sale. So my grandparents would have been around to remember this one. Um, I would have not. But using the first color television sets using NTSC standard uh, are offered for sale to the general public. NTSC is the standard used in most North America, South America, Japan, and a few other places in the world. Is this why my DVDs don't work from Britain? Like if I buy DVDs in Europe, that's why they don't work on my DVD player? Is, uh, this, is this standard? I don't think... Is it this standard? I think it's another standard, but same concept, yes. Yeah. I, lo I love that I can buy... Whenever I, I, I studied abroad in Vienna and I bought CDs and I was like, do CDs work in an American CD player? <laughs> um, and they do, so I'm happy, but <laughs> I guess it's something to do with the picture and the color. Uh, and then since we were talking about Firefox, we're going to talk about the origins of Firefox. March 8th, 1st, 2008, Netscape was discontinued. Now, Chris, you're a little bit older than me. Did you ever use Netscape Navigator? Yeah. Um, I did not. <laughs> it was Internet Explorer the all the way. And it but, like never really worked. And well, it was so slow. And it's come but, a long way because that whenever they discontinued uh, Netscape, it be they open sourced the software. This is kind of like I think this is kind of like one of the I'm not gonna say it's the gen it, it was a big moment in open source history. Netscape open source pal. I knew it was NTSC and pal. Thank you, Brian. Um, I knew that's why my DVDs don't work. DVDs had different regions, like eight codes back in the day. Uh, uh. Yeah. Anyways, the Netscape now Netscape open sourced their code, and that's what it became Firefox. Um, which is, you know, since we just talked about, that's where the Red Pandas part of our title comes today. Our title, our title for our show, always somehow incorporates the uh, the content that we're going to cover. It's a fun little game that I have to play every week, where I try to be clever, and I realize I'm not as clever as I wish I was. Uh, any other really cool? I'm looking at the thing real quick. If you go to the homepage, yeah. If you go back to the homepage, 
Back to the homepage. Is there something cool Matt, today? 1977, March 4th. First Cray supercomputer. Los Alamos, New Mexico. Which cost $19 million. Weighed five and a half tons. Produced so much heat that it required a built-in Freon-based refrigerator system. Required its own electric electrical substation to power it and at a cost of about 35000 a month in 1977. That was a big... That's, that's amazing. Could you imagine getting a bug in that thing and trying to find it? <laughs> uh, that would be not fun at all. I don't know. It's weird. Like I was going to say it's surprising how big this is, but it's also surprising how not big it is. Um, we have one of these at the computing museum near me. Um, and like, they're a tiny bit taller. If you look at that image, they're a tiny bit taller than a person. And like, it, it looks like a seat almost. Like that bit around the outside of it. Oh, I thought that was just the lobby. Y yeah, I thought it was a bench. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more to it than just this bit, but like, it's not as big as you might think it is, but it's also, compared to you know, your desktop PC, huge. So, yeah. I think, I mean, they did a lot of good works from, because I think, what was it, two weeks ago, we had a computer from like 1940s, and that thing was like building sized. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last time we did it, we talked about the ENIAC. We talked about the ENIAC la the last okay. time we did back in my day, which was really big. So, you yeah, know, they, they made a lot of prog process or progress in those in that time, which is really awesome. Moving on to March 12th, 2008, we get Hulu. I don't know if anyone cares about Hulu, but I like Hulu. Um, I watch. I'm watching Survivor on it. I just started watching Hulu, and I don't know. There's small things, and this is coming from like the programmer perspective. There's small little like nuances that Netflix has has Netflix has over Hulu. Just the ways it syncs up things, the ways like how it's faster. Mm -hmm. um, I love how I can stop it. I can turn off my TV at the end of an episode and then I go back to watch the next episode later and Hulu's like, I had already watched that episode before, but I had turned it off. So like it, it's like synced like two minutes from the end. So it starts the next episode two minutes from the end because it thinks that I want to resume instead of going on to the next one. It's always <laughs> you been my watch credits. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. The credits. Like everything's a Marvel movie and they all have post credit scenes. Um, I guess that's that's not even that like technically difficult. That's just an if statement. Like, hey, if in credits, yeah, send them yeah. next. <laughs> or if I'm going from the next, like, if 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 we're going from one episode to the other, and I'm binge watching, maybe I don't want to watch the other one halfway in the middle. Um, like maybe you should maybe you should rewind it. But I would say that like Netflix definitely has the best UI for streaming services. Hulu's next, but then there's some of them like they've they mm, hbo max irritates me like i can either watch them on the app i can watch the next episode but i cannot get to the series page from the next i have to search for it like it's like watch the next episode of doctor who i don't like this episode i want to go to the next one no you can only watch the next episode from this page <laughs> or you have to search for the series again and go to it and find it and i'm like this is that's how amazon prime video is uh and that's where I watch Doctor Who and man, navigating and they're not even like the series aren't even linked. So to get from one doctor to the next doctor, you have to like back out search and then they're all out of order. Yeah. So then you have to guess, go Wikipedia, which one's next. All the new ones are on HBO Max now. So it's, it's a slightly better experience than that if you want it. <laughs> uh, and then last piece of tech news we have for today, March 15th, 1985, the first Internet domain was registered. As symbolics.com is registered by Symbolics, a Massachusetts computer company. So I think you have that's a piece such of an opportunity to to make history and use symbolics.com. Yeah. <laughs> like like you 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 could have had a okay. I would have you, done like caveman.com. Do single letter TLD single letter domains exist? I know they exist for the DNS servers, but like could I have gotten a.com? Or do you have to at least be two letters? I, I don't think, think I've ever two. been. To... Like something, th something in my brain is going every time I've written some regex to validate a domain, it's always two or more. 
Okay. I mean, Look like at Matt po- fancy knowing regex. The shortest one that I know is like we have we have our sh- we have our bitly, which is do.co, and that's mm-hmm. a two letter. Yeah. Which which is actually very nice. Like it's my one of my favorite parts of the company is our shores our bitly. Uh, I'm curious. You've got me really curious. I'm going to have to Google this. Yeah, yeah I went into uh, domains.google. It seems like domains. So the warning I just got domains ending in .com must be between three and 63 characters. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. I you never could, knew that. You could put a paragraph in, uh, in 63 characters. Or like two emoji. <laughs> Does that work yet? Yeah, yeah, you can do emoji. Yeah. Most they browsers have... now actually show them as well. Yeah, they do. As opposed to showing the punny code for them, which is what they used to do. Hmm. Right okay. On. Yeah, I guess that's <laughs> it. I'm doing I'm doing a bad job of transitioning today. I'm a little bit tired, but we're doing good. <laughs> Uh, cool. So let's move on to uh, a new segment that we are doing that might take a little bit of time. We're actually like, we're actually ahead of schedule today, which I feel means that we failed. Um, because if we're not behind schedule, then are we, are we even doing it right? I'm going to, I'm going to put the blame on the lightning tutorial. I, you know, I am too, but you know, our, our product worked so well. I didn't have to wait five minutes for it. I'm, I'm going to go tell Kamal that he needs to slow down, slow it down. Everyone wants slow compute. I'm joking. <laughs> it's actually, yeah, it's a joke. Ha ha joke. Ha ha. Um, so we're going to just go around and talk about, it's a new segment called what's on your mind. And it's literally where Matt, Chris, and I just talk about what we're, what we're thinking about. It doesn't have to be tech related. It probably will be tech related because we're nerds. Um, but it could be a lot of other things. So we're going to go ahead and do it. And if we get to the end of the segment and we haven't, um, Use enough time, we're going to do another round. So be prepared, guys. So we're going to start off with Matt. What's on your mind? Uh, so one of the things that I've been working on over the last week um, has involved writing open, AP- open API definitions for a load of API routes. And I, the ecosystem that exists around JavaScript and Node continues to blow my mind. So there's you can do JS doc, right, when you're writing JavaScript. Um, it's a standard that exists for documenting functions and everything, really. And there are packages out there that let you write open API specifications in JS doc and then just generate a perfectly formatted open API doc. And it just, I don't know why it blows my mind, but it's just so cool that this ecosystem exists and is so well built out already. Yeah, I, I don't know. The, the amazing small random packages you can find that you're like, wait, that already exists? Amazing. I'm going to have to answer Bobby's question. How will we handle date formatting on Mars? There is a node TC39 proposal that exists um, for completely redoing how date time works in node, and it will handle interplanetary dates. <laughs> Great. That's exactly what we need. Let's go find it. Because de- because dealing with dates and times in computer science wasn't hard enough. Now I have cool. we haven't even gotten it working on Earth yet. We have so we have time zones. So now we'll have planet zones, planet orbital zones. I guess. I'm there's such I'm, an opportunity for naming to be cool there. I'm just upset because like I we haven't gotten it working on earth yet like date date like i think i have one of my most popular tweets one time is like do you ever want to just hate a programming language immediately go work with its date time library (laughs) it's the quickest way to hate a lot hate a computer programming language um and the one that i dealt with was go because do you know that go cannot parse the date time format that it itself encodes wait what Yes, there is a bug in Go that's been there forever that it, you can use the Go, like some sort of like date time STRF conference. Like it's one of them and it will encode it, but it cannot decode its own. Me- that's uh, that's spectacular. I hate it so much. I was so upset, but I was not surprised. 
okay chris what's on your mind uh i mean more to that i i have trouble doing it in php if it adds a time zone and this is probably wrong whatever i'm saying so please don't hate me um it puts like a little z at the end and i think that means there's a time zone attached but it, nobody can parse the z so i have to like do this string replace z with blank character thing and it's been a while but uh I don't know. You just walk away from those problems and hopefully you never see them again. The Z is for Zulu time. What is that? Zulu? UTC. So the Z That's means cool. that there's That's no cool word. offset. Means gotcha. There's no okay. offset. Oh, it is part of the ISO 8601 format. That Z is expected. Mm. And why couldn't things parse it? Oh, well. <laughs> because date time. Because date time. Um, so one thing I saw this week that's been on my mind is, let me share my screen, is a tweet from David Perel, and he has like this whole two minute and 20 thing about uh, imposter syndrome, and I know that we talk about this a lot in the coding industry, but basically his entire thing is everybody's an imposter and that's like the point of coding is if you're gonna go try to build something amazing then you're probably building something that you haven't built before so by definition everything we're trying to do next we haven't done before which means we are imposters which means everybody's imposters which means nobody's an imposter it's kind of a fun listen um i'll drop a link in chat there but I've been thinking about that a little bit this week. Hmm. Awesome. I have to go check it out. It. Yeah, but then there's days that I'm like, I don't remember how to parse a string in Python, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> brain so dumb. Yesterday, I Googled for like four different JavaScript array methods, like simple ones too, like sort, uh, well, reduce, not simple, but I don't know. As long as you know what to Google. Yeah, I guess that's what it is now. Our industry is just knowing what to Google and like what method. Like, which one did I? What did I have to Google? Yes. Oh, I never remember how to do like which how how to specify a Flask app to just take a post and not a get like and, and it's it's in the decorator and I never remember that it's a secondary parameter. Mm -hmm. Um. So I always have to go and Google that. So. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's an art being able to read the docs and understand the docs and know what to look for in the docs. <laughs> I guess in reality, we're all just researchers that research the same thing over and over again. I like that. I'm good. Yep. New job title, researcher. <laughs> uh, so my thing on my mind has not been tech related, but it has been something that if 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 Fred's on the watching, then he knows about this. But my chair is almost gone. And I mean, gone, gone. Like, so if you can't, t I, I've been sitting weird the last few weeks because if I lean this way, the chair falls like, like it's, this is my house is level. This chair is not the back part of the left side of this chair is completely tilted down by at least 20 degrees. Um, I like to like, I'm, I'm bad about like pushing myself up in my chair and I completely broke this arm, which is now packaging taped together. Like it is, if you, like if you can, like there is, there's packaging tape there that is holding this, this thing on, like there, there has long not been any like fake leather. See, that's what I do is I push myself up and I just heard my chair creak again. Um, and I'm mostly just like, I, I'm, I'm at this point where I almost, like, I know I need to get a new one. I know I will, if like when I get my next paycheck, I'll probably get a new one. But at this point, I just kind of want to see how long it lives. Like, I want to see, like, if I can keep it going for another... Because I've had this chair for five years. I think we've seen how long it can live. It, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a honey badger got to the back of it. It's No, it's 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 pretty much dead. The last time I put it in recline mode, it took me 20 minutes to get it to out of recline mode because the mechanism that puts it, that, like, lock was not coming back. And I'm like, so now I can't put it in recline mode anymore because I'll literally be just staring at the ceiling all day. Um... I will say that it does have a small benefit is now it's making me use my standing desk. Like I've, I've I've, I use my standing desk most of the afternoon yesterday 
to give the chair a little bit of a break. Um, as you see, I have a couch right next to my bed. So like whenever I, whenever I need a break, I just sit on the couch. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I also, I'm, I'm so picky when it comes to chairs. I'm so picky. It took there me we go. years. Let's, let's talk about that. It took me years to find a chair that I actually like. This is like, like an ergonomic, it's got like Serta. Like the, the padding is still very good. I guess that's why like, like it's still comfortable. It just leans an awkward direction. Oh, what is that? All right, so let's talk chairs then. Okay, fine. Let's talk computer chairs because I am uh, I am already I already feel upset by what you just put on the screen. I well, like, it look comfortable at all. <laughs> There's like standing desk chairs that are like these tall stools. Um, there's the Bosu ball, the yoga ball that you can sit on. I'm sorry, also, are... $829. What are you paying for? It's mostly air. Chairs are very <laughs> expensive. That's the other reason why I haven't bought chairs, because they are stupidly expensive. Okay, that's um, just dumb. That's a pole with a, <laughs> a chair. That, that's a pogo stick. I've heard this is a good one. The, what uh, is this? It supports your, like, your thighs. <laughs> I'm going to have back problems. I'm learning, uh, I'm learning a whole new definition to chair currently. Okay, hold on, hold on. There's more kneeling those chairs. Those are amazing. I've those <laughs> kneeling chair things, like where you like you have to like it takes like like you fold yourself and like what is that? Look at the six hundred dollars seesaw. It's called TikTok together. Is that a TikTok chair? Where you just watch TikToks? <laughs> no, where you where you like do TikToks together. Is that a TikTok? Oh, it's a sideways rocking chair. <laughs> but for couples. I hate How are you it. supposed to work? I hate it. You're not supposed to work. You're just supposed to tick. Look how awkward they look. Partner to share a relaxed, healthy, healthy rhythm. So it's As like you work together. What? You but can buy a ping pong table or you can buy this. I don't know. I, this is too sophisticated for me. I do not understand. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at almost buying the exact same chair or buying like a gamer chair or something like that. Like, I'm not looking to get weird chairs. So this is the one I'm rocking is the uh, steel case gesture. And then you there's pay, also... Did you, did you pay 2K for that chair? No, one. Oh. Wait, did I? Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> and then well, the I... other one that's supposedly like really popular is the Embody. You know, those don't look terrible. I just, I have to, I, as a bigger person, I have to get like a big and tall chair. So like, I always have to be like aware of, I can't buy cheap chairs. Like I've gone to, I've gone to office Depot, bought a $150 chair and I broke it in three days because I like, because I put like, I like to lean back in my chair and if it, and if it does not, if it has like a, like a composite cardboard base, I'm going to rip the screws right out of it. Like this one has like, it's a solid piece of, um, of, of like plywood right there. The chair I'm, I'm trying to find it was 50 oh. pounds off Amazon. <laughs> I well, thought you said it weighs 50 pounds. No, no, no cost 50 pounds. Remember, remember, they have that they have that that currency over there. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's also a measurement of weight. Dollars. Thank you, Matt. I Nicholas in chat says, um, thinking about Gabe's wearable chair from Silicon Valley. I hated that thing, and I like went to go look up. A, a clip of it to try to put it on air and my captions are on and it's just curse words all over the place so yeah no you definitely I'll, cannot we'll on that. you can definitely not do uh they're that. just they're just as obnoxious as they sound like um i would not want one of those at all but i could see how like if you like if you were working a conference booth or something that would make would but I just would, kick you in the shins or in, I the, would just, in the calves? I would just look stupid. Like, I would look so weird wearing that. Like, I don't want to wear that. It's I the did, future, Mason. It. Get on board. No, no, I'm good. I'm fine. I'll just get a new chair. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get something nice and ergonomic. We have a teammate who's really good at pointing out chairs, so I'm definitely going to use that. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Do we have anything else we want to talk about before we move on? Uh, no, let's let's jump into next week's events. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm now I'm upset about chairs. So, <laughs> but it's fine. I'll I'll just live my life this way. Um. So Laravel Con is or no sorry getting started with laravel Jetstream, chris you're gonna be doing a tech talk on this next wednesday it appears yes. um so what is laravel Jetstream? so laravel is a php framework that lets us build apps pretty quickly uh has a lot of really good stuff out of the box so what they've done since they have built out like a fantastic framework is they start building on tools that help you build your apps so this is Jetstream. This is a tool that gives you basically a starter kit for your app where it gives you login registration, email verification, um, and like a dashboard for profile management and stuff like that. And it gives you the UI for everything. So pretty much out of the box, you can have an app with login and everything uh, with a dashboard, the ability to give people their own API tokens, all this cool stuff that you would expect from a SaaS comes out of the box here. So we're going to talk about that next Wednesday, March 10. That sounds pretty cool. I'm not a PHP or Laravel developer, but that does something like that offers a lot of really cool features. Yeah, so I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not either, but just the Laravel ecosystem is spectacular. Yeah, I would love to see this ecosystem in the JavaScript world uh, as far as like you create a, a Laravel app, and then you, if you want like login and all this stuff, you just install Jetstream. If you need like uh, queue handling and stuff like that, you add in Horizon. So you just install a bunch of things. Um, they have Spark that gives you subscription payments, uh, one-time payments, billing, invoicing. So it's mm -hmm. like you can piece together your SaaS just by installing these packages. Yeah, I guess there's there's, there's no equivalent to Laravel really in the node ecosystem no uh, one that is close is adonis which was kind of inspired by laravel but laravel has just had so much time to build the ecosystem yeah. so maybe in a few years time we'll see something that becomes kind of as mainstream as laravel is yeah you see next.js doing a lot of stuff like um adding in commerce adding in analytics um, but I think there's more they can do. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. neat. And then Laracon Online is happening today, Chris. Is that a Laravel conference? Um, that is happening March 17. March like, 17. Oh, okay. Today I might be missing it. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, I... so it's... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, so it's Laracon uh, is, since we're not doing in-person conferences at the moment, Laracon Online has been running for a few years. All the great speakers you'd expect from the Laracon, Laravel community, um, including Taylor, the creator. So yeah, check it out. Awesome. That hero was beautiful. If you scroll back up. Yeah, this thing right here. And it, and it has like this like layered animation. That just makes me so happy. I don't know why. Uh, three layers, it looks like. All right, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole so Mason take us away. Okay. Okay. We have a we have a comment in the chat says, "Hey, loving the platform so far. We're using Perforce on a droplet and looking to host a Linux dedicated server on a droplet, but can't find much documentation on getting the server build deployed." Um, Harvey, are you asking about how to get Perforce deployed or how to just get a droplet deployed? Because we have a lot of we have a lot of really good documentation on getting droplets deployed inside of our community, but I do not think we have a Perforce tutorial, and that is not a that is not a word I have heard in a long time. Have either of you two ever worked with Perforce? Nope. No. Imagine Git, but the only way you can check out is if you're online. What like? So Perforce is a, it's, it's instead of being distributed, it's, it's distributed F, v, uh, VCS. It's a, it's a centralized VCS. So everyone has to connect to the server. You check it out and then it locks those files for no one else to be able to check out. And if you want to check them back in, you have to be on the company VPN. Like you have to be connected. It's old, old, old tech. Um, uh, before pre, pre SVN? It's pre, it's, I think it is a pre SVN. I think it's like one of the first VCSs. Let me look it up. When was Perforce created? 
Uh, 19. Well, no, it says 1995. Maybe that is old in tech. I should say, if you go onto the DigitalOcean Q and A section and search Perforce, well, it seems there is like a lot of results. Okay, well, they did. They did say no. They're trying to get their Unreal Engine game server running. Okay, I know nothing about that, but <laughs> I don't. A, think a lot we of actually... these seem to be Unreal related. So, but the the Perforce stuff. Yeah, if you search Perforce in community, like all the most most of the results seem to be Unreal related. Maybe Unreal is like the only thing that still uses it. That might be why. Let's see, we just used it because we were weird. Um, but maybe that would make sense because I, I like I, I don't know why anyone would come on. Community sites being a little bit slow today. Yeah, I used SVN early in my career and um. Came over to Git and I saw a, a merge conflict in Git and I was like, "This is nothing compared to SVN." So, it made me stronger. Hmm. Harvey saying Perforce for Unreal is so nice; it interstates so well and stops conflicts with developers. Yeah, I imagine that maybe game development doing a merge request on game development code would be kind of tough. Also, then you know who's working on what because you can see who has the lock file. So I could see where it would be advantageous for certain things. I just, it was such a pain to use um, because there's not a lot of modern tooling around. At least there wasn't whenever I was trying to use it. And like the, the Perforce UI was so clunky. Um, I didn't really care for it that much. So unfortunately, I don't know if we have any tutorials on Unreal Engine and stuff. Um, however... Maybe you write for donations. Maybe that would be a cool set of tutorials you could write for us, like DigitalOcean. We have the do.co slash w4do, which I'll mm -hmm. put in the chat. Um, we do know that a lot of people do tend to want to put, um, like, build build games on DigitalOcean, which is it is a customer base that we have. So, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll talk to our community people, see if they want some Unreal Engine ones, because that's a pretty good idea. Awesome. Uh, okay, so someone says they have a, a Keychron K6 with an Arch Linux keycap. The amount of people that I know that have done like Linux keycaps to remove the Windows keycap from their computer is non-trivial. <laughs> and I'm that's why I got blank keys, because I can't see it. Um, and if that's what you want to do with your time and money, hey, more power to you. Uh, Keychron's a, um, a brand that I've come across multiple times whilst looking at mechanicals seem really solid yeah they're fun i wish okay. i had all of mine all well, your all, all your what your keyboards or your keycaps keyboards um keycaps too i actually think that would be a cool swag item don't you think like when you go to go to a virtual conference and like give out keycaps mm -hmm. like um we looked at it i want to do it We'll Actually, so I want to do for some DO swag is studying keycaps. Yeah. That's a great idea, especially like these three D ones that kind of pop out of a keyboard. Oh wow! Like, can you imagine a little Sammy as like your escape key? Yes, <laughs> Sammy jumping out of your. Um, we can make Sammy the escape key. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I think that's what we got. Yeah, thank you, Chris, for moving forward. I'm reading the chat, so uh, <laughs> Harvey is asking about a Do Shark. Uh, shoot me an email, Mason at Do Co. And you? yeah, like that. Like you talking about the the plushie or the stress ball? Because we've got a stress ball, we got a plushie. Do we still have the vinyl shark? Is that still a thing that exists? I have never seen one. They, these are the these two and the slippers are the only. Ones that I've seen. But yeah, shoot me an email and uh, we'll see what we can do about that, Harvey. Okay, I All think right. we're good. I think we're going to move yeah. on to the joke of the day and sign off, unless there's anything else my co-hosts want to talk about before we go to really bad joking. No, I'm just bracing myself already. Oh, you're, you're bracing yourself, Brace, because yep. it's, it's pretty pretty bad. Okay. Um, this one, I, again, like, ugh, I'm, I'm trying to phrase this one in my head, so... What type of computer's favorite song is something like you? Hold on, hold on. I got to process that one. 
Say it again. What type of computer's favorite song is something like you? Okay, what type? Adele. Okay. <laughs> That's got to be funny, and you know it. Yeah, <laughs> saw, it's good. It's good. I saw I saw our our stream managers in the background put their hands in their face. So I <laughs> win for the day. I got bad jokes for days. Uh, uh, no. Okay. That was, well, that was, that was good. Yeah, yeah. They're good. They're, I, I'm actually gonna have to start. Like, I need to start writing some of these down because, like, I'm 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 running out. And also, I think Chris and I want to make an API of these. So, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you everyone for attending this time and we will be back again next week. Same time, same place, which will be March 11th, it's my dad's birthday. Um, so that'll be a fun one. And thank you everyone for attending. We'll see you next time. See you then. Bye everybody.